It is Jeff the Maintenance Man. How y'all doing? In one of my videos, if you haven't seen it yet, it's the 60 ton unit um, air conditioning tour. And in that video, I said, well, I do know what this does. And I pointed to this thing here, as you see on my screen, which is the V1000. The V1000 basically is a pulse width modulator controller or it's called a its actual name is called a variable uh, frequency drive it's called a vfd for short and as you can see here we have a nice grainy photo i didn't have a better potato i guess to get this picture but uh anyway <clears throat> here's some information on the thing i uh, can go up to like 6,000 Hertz I guess um, and we're gonna go over what this does we're not gonna go over how it works but we'll go over what it does so you can get an idea of why this is in this unit and why wouldn't you just hook it up to a relay that starts so I got this software that's called Protus 8 which is awesome I love it I've used it for years I uh, just got the newest version of it upgraded to it and we have um we have uh, a schematic here and now this is not the schematic that is for that controller there it's far from it but this is the basic schematic that i can give you that explains how that thing works i mean there's a lot more going on in the vfd than there is uh, in the schematic but this is just for the basic concept of how that thing works okay so let's just go over real quick the schematic uh, so you kind of know you can kind of follow me and and then you'll know what I'm talking about up here this is nothing but uh, our clock for the chip so this sets how fast the chip is running and in this case it's a uh, it's one megahertz um you got like two buffer capacitors and a uh a uh, pull down resistor could be a pull up i don't know a one meg transistor current limiting transistor probably so anyway there's we don't even have to worry about that that just controls the clock processes in the chip this over here is just a switch and it just goes through kind of a variable resistor and it goes to five volts but in our case this would probably be hooked to a couple hundred volts maybe 200 volts or something along that lines of that so we're just going to call this the thermostat area here okay your variable resistor is going to be your temperature up and down which will then switch on uh, this switch telling the microcontroller hey you just switched on the switch and turn on the motor now I know what you're saying why don't you just have a switch that turns on the motor well this in that unit this motor here is 10 horsepower if you hook this switch to even a relay and then from the relay to the motor it'd probably melt the it'll probably melt or burn out the relay it would have so much inrush current is what it's called that it would flip the breaker off melt wires burn up wires whatever the reason this happens is because this is a disk of magnets basically and well when they're electrified they're magnets so you have 10 horsepower you plug that in right well this thing is at a standstill so it's got to get going so what this whole circuit does here and what that vfd does this thing is it <clears throat> it pulses the electricity to the motor let's see what that looks like uh, in the schematic so it's off right now the motors not spinning 
keep an eye on these two test points. This, um, I'll, I'll explain real quick before I turn this on. Right here, oscill oscillator number one and oscill I mean, oscilloscope number one and oscilloscope number two. So oscilloscope number one, the program within this chip is going to start at a high. So it's going to turn on and then the the microchip will take over and say I don't want you on I want you on for this period of time this period of time this period of time and get longer 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 pulses so the motor gets up to speed and then it's going to turn off the electricity so you're not using any electricity and keep pulsing it pulsing it pulsing it pulsing it pull 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 pulse like this and it's going to go forward reverse forward reverse in this in this case but in our case this would just continue uh, to pulse, 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 pulse until it's on, and then the, the oscillator one would actually turn the power off in increments while this is pulsing just a frequency. So then you don't get that inrush current that we were talking about. You get this nice just pop, okay, turn on, and then it, this is in milliseconds. I mean, but it's enough. That's all you need. It, so this. Let's say this is circling, and as soon as it gets here, it pop, 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 pop. So it gets faster and faster and faster, and then it gets the motor up to speed, and then after the motor's up to speed, all you need to do is pop it every maybe second or so, because the momentum of the motor spinning will keep it turning. So there's no point in having electricity to a motor constantly if you can just put electricity just every once in a while so you use less electricity that's what the whole idea is behind this is to have variable speed and have make it where it's controllable in an environment that you can use a lot less electricity and bigger and more efficient motor because if you didn't have this if you didn't have this controller then this motor would use so much electricity to be on 24 7 and this that and other so let's see how this works real quick let's say the temperature in the room got to 72 degrees and it's supposed to be 70 well the, the thermostat which is just a switch basically would switch on and the motor would get pulsed over here it's pulsing it Right here you can see it and then it goes in the reverse in this case in this program it's going forward reverse forward reverse so you turn on on this to bring it backwards and this one pulses it back forward just to give you an idea of how that works now to display let's just not even worry about that that's kind of measuring the rpms or something but who cares Um, so when it when it's up to temperature, it just simply goes off, and the motor winds down under its own momentum, further giving you just that tiny little boost of cooling or heating, whatever whatever the unit may be in. So this basically is a really more efficient way of running a motor you could probably put an oscilloscope on this now I can't do it right now but you could probably put an oscilloscope on this and see the current that or a multimeter and see the current that's going in there and um, in this case you would see just tiny bits of current but the motor requires, let's say the motor requires 20 amps to turn on. All you got to do is pulse that 20 amp just for a fraction of a second and it'll spin the motor. Do it for another fraction of a second and it'll spin the motor again and spin it, spin it, and then get your pulses going. It's like pressing the power button on something. And just getting faster and faster and faster with it and you'll see the motor will start spinning faster so basically that's all it's doing 
This is this microcontroller is your finger pushing a button that is putting pulses through here. These little doodads here are darling transistors, and what they're doing is taking the load off of the uh, microcontroller here, which is a MC68HC118 A8 Alpha 8. So anyway. So one's responsible for the reverse and one's responsible for the forward. So, and essentially with the VF1000, which is here, it can pulse out 60,000 hertz, which is 60 times a second or 6,000 times a second, I'm sorry. So, yeah, so it can get this motor going pretty fast. For an example, if you took this circuit and you put maybe a double a battery let's say we, we downgrade this motor to a 12 volt motor which in this case in this schematic it is let's say you take a battery and you put it in here uh, like a double a battery then this will send pulses out of here the darling transistors will amplify and take the load off of the microcontroller at the same time but you could essentially run this even though it takes 12 volts of power you could pulse it it would take a long time probably a long time to start up but you could get some crazy speeds out of this thing just pulsing it with like one volt or something and then that one volt will just turn into six thousand times one volt which we're not amplifying the voltage we're just amplifying the frequency so you have one volt, but you have one volt going to that motor 600,000 times a second or whatever, then you can get you can get pretty crazy with it. And you can actually tune it in. If you had something like this variable resistor here, you could tune it in to where it it's pulsing this thing every time, like, uh, the north or the south pole of the magnet, and this is called resonance, and... Uh, resonance frequency is when every time that north pole goes here and that south pole is there you pulse it and you can just keep going whap 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 so you could yeah so i'm not saying that's even reliable like if you would you know, use a 1.5 volt battery on a 12 volt motor you probably want to tr uh, go ahead and pulse. It'd be more efficient to pulse it with the 12 volts um, every time, and then it'll get up to speed faster. So you would, in the end, you would use probably more energy. You would use less volts, but it still would be not as efficient as using the actual uh, voltage rating of the motor. So again, all it does is over here, it's pulse, 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 pulse gets it up to speed. This one comes on over here, and this pulses it back the other way. Pretty cool little device, actually. I had to do a little bit of research to figure out what that thing was when when it first um, when it first when I first saw it. I was like, "What is this thing? Variable frequency drive?" But it's basically a pulse width modulation motor controller. This one is using like a Darlington bridge driver kind of thing here. That's what I was going over uh, earlier, but that's a whole different video itself on how that works. Um, so yeah, this is a motor driver that can drive a motor in any direction. And basically, this is a motor driver that can drive it in any direction. You can reverse, speed it up, slow it down. It actually has sensors in it itself that can uh, take compensation for like, let's say if we didn't change the filters, it would speed up the, it would try to speed up the motor to compensate for it, um, stuff like that. So that's basically how that little, that little V1000 thing that I pointed to in the video works it's not too terribly complicated youtubers if y'all have any questions for me or any ideas about how i can make your life more pleasure pleasurable you let me know all right
Y'all have a great day.